So I think in the school system, they don't want us to learn about money because they just want to pump out good employees that do what they're told. I mean, if you look at school, it's opposite of what it takes to be successful in real life. Don't make a mistake. Do as you're told. Take tests by yourself. Don't cooperate. Do it by yourself. Do it on your own. And um, the last thing was, uh, oh, there's only one right answer. No, there's tons of answers to a, a problem. So you come out of school scared to death of making a mistake. You do everything on your own. You don't cooperate. There's no synergy. There's no brainstorming. And there's only one right answer. Everybody wants to get the right answer. There's no one right answer. So I think people come out of school paralyzed. I think the school system is criminal in that it kills a child's spirit of learning. You know, some, a child goes into school all excited about, yeah, I'm going to learn and it's going to be great. And then the teacher says, sit down and shut up. Don't talk. We don't care what you're interested in. Did anybody in school ever ask you, did the teacher ever ask you, Brian, what are you interested in? I, I never did. I never did. So they just teach you what they want to teach you instead of finding out what the child is interested in and teaching to that. So I think, I think kids come out of school scared to death of making a mistake. They come out paralyzed. They don't know what they want to do because their, their spirit and their creativity has been crushed inside of them. So you almost have to do a whole reprogramming once you get out of school so you can find, so you can find out what, what it is that, that excites you. What it is that, that where your passion is. When Robert and I had our first date back in 1984, in he asked Hawaii. me in Hawaii, okay. he said, what do you want to do with your life? I had been fired twice from the same job out of college, twice. From the same job? Yep. Okay. They, they fired me and they hired me back and they fired me again. <laughs> and I knew I wanted my own business. <laughs> so on our first date, he said, what do you want to do with your life? And I said, I want my own business, but I don't know anything about entrepreneurship. I've never been around entrepreneurs. And Robert said, well, I've started several businesses and all of my friends are entrepreneurs. I'm like, great, perfect. So two months later, I started my first business. But the funniest thought I had coming from an employee was, oh, now my time is my time. I'll do it whenever I want. And I'll have all this free time and it's, it's going to be on my schedule. Wrong. No, you work 24 seven. <laughs> I had no free time and I'm like, okay, so that was a myth I had, but that was my mindset as an employee that where you work nine to five, oh, now I can get up and I can start at 11. And you know, if I want to work at night, I can work at night. No, you're working, especially when you're starting a business, it's 24 seven. Entrepreneurship is not for the faint of hearts. It is not because you're always pushing the envelope, right? And, and the purpose of an entrepreneur is to solve problems. So every day something happens and you're like, oh, I didn't expect that. And you got to deal with it. And, and I also say entrepreneurship is the fast track to personal development. Because every is. day, right, you're, fa you're facing something right here. It's yeah. like, oh, man. And you can't back down from it. You got you to gotta deal with it. They say like 50% of businesses fail. And I think what happens for a lot of first-time business owners, they're coming out of a job. So they're coming out of an employee ma mindset. And I, I know this one guy, for example, in Phoenix, Arizona, and he decided he was going to start his own business. And he had been an employee all his life. So what's the first thing he does? He goes and rents a nice office space. Then he buys all the nice furniture. Then he gets a secretary. He hasn't made not one dollar. And he spends all this because he thinks that's what an entrepreneur looks like. Versus go make the money first then go rent your office. If you even need an office, start out of your home. We all started, all the entrepreneurs, successful entrepreneurs I know, all started out of their home. But a lot of people I see, they, they quit their job, they start their part-time business, and because they're struggling for money, they make bad decisions because they're just trying to find how to put money in their pocket to keep their business alive. So I, I think if you are an employee, that's a smart way to go, what you just said, to start a part-time business, start learning what it takes, the reality, you gotta get the reality of what it takes. And I, I came across a study, and it was a study of centenarians, people that lived over 100, and they wanted to find what were the common denominators, and they found three. And one was they had a sense of purpose. It didn't matter how big or small, but they had a sense of purpose. Number two, they were optimistic. And number three was resiliency, how well you come back from a setback. When you hit that wall, do you fall down? Do you get up? Do you go through it? And I'm like, 
Those seem like the three, the three characteristics of a good entrepreneur to me. <laughs> Sense of purpose, optimistic, and resilient. Yeah. If you if you're not resilient and you don't you can't persevere, do not become an entrepreneur. They're so afraid to venture out on their own and not and have not have the security of that paycheck. You know, a lot of times we say if you got a, if you have a full time job, keep your full time job, start a part time business, and work it and work it and work it. Look at what you do in your spare time, and and people go, I have no spare time. Well, yes, you do. If you broke it out. How, how much are you watching TV? How much are you on your iPhone, playing video games, doing things that really are not important? And take that time and channel it into the business that you want to create. And we just launched a, <coughs> excuse me, a product on finding out what's most meaningful to you. Because once you can discover what's most meaningful, then decisions and, and life become so much easier because there's more joy, there's more better communication with relationships. But they don't teach any of this in school. They just Say, sit down, do as you're told, take the test by yourself, and don't make a mistake. And so I think a lot of people, they don't want to be uncomfortable. They don't want to get out of their comfort zone. And the only way we grow and learn is by stretching ourselves and getting out of our comfort zone, even by a little bit. You know, it's it. Um, Emerson said, "This is not the exact quote, but something to the effect of, if you're not facing something you fear every day, you're, you don't understand the secret of life." Because that's where growth and transformation happens. Yeah. So, and I and I hate making mistakes, just like everybody else. I hate failing, but that's where we learn the most. If we can take the lesson of the failure and take the lesson of the mistake, and and learn from it, then we get much smarter. And it's not about do what you love and the money will follow. It's not that. It's do what you love. Where do you? Where's the problem you're solving? Where can you be a contribution? Then you work your butt off. And then the money will come. <laughs> Amen. I can agree with that. But I, I just like I like having I like thinking of um, making a contribution versus just selling a product. Right. Right. And, and I'll say one other thing. A lot of people say, you know, I really want to make a difference in the world, and I think my product or my service is going to make that difference. But they're not willing to charge money for it or really turn it into a business. If you've got a product or service and you really feel it's going to help help people and help the masses, then you have a responsibility to make your business successful so that people hear about you and to get it out to the world.